2,300 years ago, the single most important book on persuasion was written. And to this day, the single best resource on what it takes to speak in such a way that others take action because they hear your words is the book called Rhetoric, written by Aristotle 2,300 years ago. You can find a copy of Rhetoric online and everything that we will be touching on here in this module is stolen directly from Aristotle because nothing has really changed in all these 2,000 years in what it takes inside the mind of a listener to make them engage with you and change. And Aristotle told us we must connect on three levels if we are to have an influence on another person. And those three levels, logos, ethos, and pathos. Logos. Logos is that our arguments make sense from the other's point of view. That the benefits that we share are benefits that the other values. If we tell you you're gonna get more money because of this, the other values getting more money. And Aristotle talks about the search for the enthymeme. The enthymeme is the point where what I believe and what you believe connect. And sometimes you have to go quite a few layers down to find a fact that I accept and you accept, but we can build from there. So if you can find the enthymeme, you can find a fact that I accept and you accept, we can build a logos-based argument on top of that. So logos is my arguments, my benefits make sense from the listener's point of view. The second connection that we need to achieve is what Aristotle calls ethos. Ethos is credibility. And there's two elements to credibility. One is professional, my reputation. What do people say about me? If you search for my name on Google, what do you find? If you look at my LinkedIn profile, what's on there? What do people who know me say about me? So one element is reputation, but there's another part of ethos, which is the way you speak. And there's three parts to that. One is your voice, the quality of your voice, your breathing, the resonance of your voice. One area that uh, often is weak in a voice is what we call downward inflection. Downward inflection is on the words and on the phrases that really matter. At the end of the sentence, there's a downward inflection. IESA is the best business school in the world. Downward inflection. Upward inflection. ESA Business School is the best business school in the world. Upward inflection destroys credibility. It's, it's what removes the power of a voice. So we're going to look at the elements of your voice that contribute to your credibility. The second area of, of credibility is how you dress. So this morning when I woke up, I could have worn shorts and a t-shirt, but I made a decision to wear a suit and a tie. And it has an impact. And the right decision is not always to put on a suit. If I was asked to go and visit my daughter's school and to give a talk about careers, maybe a suit would be a poor decision because it would create enormous distance between myself and the 11, 12 year olds as they sit there. And it might be a smart idea to, to wear something that allows them to relate better to me. So the voice, the way you dress. The third area of, of credibility is your gestures the movements of your hands, the movements of your body. And very often it's whether the movements are coherent with your words that leads to someone feeling that you're authentic, that this is truly you. Uh, often we find that nerves destroy your voice and nerves destroy the gestures. Uh, we'll be looking at what do you do with your hands? What do you do as you move to convey credibility? And this ethos part if you can do it well, people listen to you. But when ethos is there, people know there's something valuable to be heard. The third area, pathos. So logos is the benefits are clear to the listener. Ethos is you see me as a valid speaker on this subject. The third is pathos. Pathos is emotion. And there are two ways that a human conveys emotion to other people. The first, is feeling that emotion itself. If I'm here feeling an emotion, feeling love, feeling gratitude, feeling loyalty, feeling conviction as I speak, that can be contagious. But it's quite rare in today's modern age to feel one emotion. 
mobile phones, distraction, all the things going on around us lead us to spend a lot of our lives with multiple different things going on inside us. So part of pathos is being able to center in one feeling and have one feeling that you feel regards to how this message should impact you and the audience. The second way we share emotion is story. And you'll notice through these videos, I share little stories from Greek myth, from my own life, from examples from class, because a story is an emotion encapsulated in, in, a, in a text. And the use of story is very powerful in terms of persuading using emotion. Logos, ethos, pathos. But Aristotle told us that one is more important than the other two. And the one that is most important is ethos, credibility. If you are seen as credible, if the people listening trust you, it makes a huge difference to the impact of your words. Where there's no trust, your benefits will be not viewed with the same strength. Where there's no trust, your stories won't have the impact. What I'd like you to do is if you think about somebody that you're going to have a, com a conversation with, a group you're going to speak to, just put down on a page what gives you credibility to speak to this person?